initially when she installed the hair, I loved it. Okay. After that, it made me start acting hair? crazy. You're yes, saying sir. that hair can make you crazy? Hair carries spirits. She gave me dead people's hair. This is absolutely wigging me out. He has been my friend since elementary school. Why are you suing him? Because fantasy football causes a lot of contention between friends. It's, it's fantasy football. It's more than fantasy football when you have a lot of money involved. I want my freaking money. Plaintiffs Gervon and Russell Thacker claim an evil esthetician sold them a haunted wig harvested from a human corpse. They're suing for $3,500. Defendant Barbara Clayton claims she doesn't know where the horrifying hair came from, and she doesn't owe them a dime. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Morning, Najee. How are you? I'm doing well, Judge. Thank you. Good. This is case number 104 on the docket, Thacker versus Clayton. I see we have here the plaintiffs, Jervon and Russell Thacker, and you are suing the defendant, Barbara Clayton, for $3,500 for the installation and removal of a bad wig, as well as emotional distress. Let's start with you, Javon and Russell. You can state your case. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, first, I am pissed off. I am pissed off because I have known the defendant for over five, maybe even six years now. So after coming out of quarantine, I was ready to do something different to spice up my marriage and to look a little better and feel better. So I called her and I said, I yeah. needed to get my face done. And I th think I want to do something different with my hair. Can you help with my hair? So the problem has been that initially when she installed the hair, I love the hair. She suggested the color. She suggested the wig because she wanted to go ahead and add it to her services. I accepted that. And then so when she put it in, I was loving it. The very first day that I got it installed, it was great. I loved it. The next day or so okay. after that, I started getting sick. It made me start acting hair. crazy. And so when I could not get in touch with her, Your Honor, I did research. Yeah, this is new to me. This is new. You're educating <laughs> yes, me. This I'm is sorry. To me too. So you're basically saying your research showed, I'm gonna let you talk about the research in a second, but yes, you're sir. saying that hair can make you crazy? Hair carries spirits, Your Honor. I don't know if you believe in spirits, but I believe in spirits. I did my research in Exhibit T. There's an article that I did a research on that, say, that stated if it happened to someone else, then it clearly can happen again. Okay, I'm reading what you, the article, and the headline yes. is, uh, uh, Najee, have you heard about this? I have A woman just... suffers terrible headaches after she is fitted with human hair weave taken from a corpse that was filled with flesh-eating maggots that burrowed into her skin. Wow. Well, that, wow. yeah, wow. Wow. Is this normally done, that the hair comes from a corpse? This is absolutely wigging me out that she thinks that it's okay for her to come and sue me like I made the wig. I don't know where the hair came from. I told her that I'm not a cosmetologist. I am an esthetician. Yeah. That's what I do. If it had something to do with her skin, you... that was fine. But all this stuff that she's made up about me adding... Um, uh, wig services to my uh, menu, that's a lie. Because I'm, I could lose my license. I don't have a cosmetology license. I could lose my license. No, sir. No, sir, Judge Jerry. Yeah. That is not true. The hair came from the funeral home. Wow. The guy that she got the hair from came from the funeral home. He was working with the dead, and they were being cremated, and he was trying to make a hustle off of the dead people's hair. I had dead people's hair in Whoa. my head. I, ex I talked to her, and I tried to reach out to her in Exhibit F. I explained to her that she gave me dead people's hair in Exhibit F. I got it here. You're saying, so you sold me a wig, and I've been acting funny ever since. I think the hair has spirits. That's why I don't do weave. Someone else's hair. When she first got the hair in on the way back to South Carolina, um, she was doing a live and she was talking very, very strange. And um, we uh, began to argue um, a whole lot more than usual. You know, we have our little spats but we argue. I brought um, the video. I like to be on Facebook yeah. and I like to talk about different things that I'm doing on Instagram. So on my Instagram story, sure. I was sharing with my friends and family. So I sent the video. 
so I just went and got my hair done. Your girl is cute or whatever. I know it's something different. You know, I'm coming out of quarantine. I want to do something different. You feel me? Ain't no more quarantine. Nowhere ain't it right, daddy. Big daddy. Yeah, but why are you talking like that? This morning I woke up with a massive headache. So... You are, you're fighting more with your husband now? My husband you, and I are doing he, a lot of stuff. He He's saying that I'm doing crazy stuff that I never would have done. We were laying down, and I was asleep and woke yeah. up, and she was, yeah. like, humping me on my backside. You know, and I got up, and I was like, what is going on with you? She was doing... She, yeah. Whoa. She was doing what to your backside? She was humping me like a dog on my backside. He said I was humping she him was, like a chihuahua. And you're saying the hair caused you to do it? She admittedly got it from an overseas dealer who works at a funeral home and cut the corpse's hair off of dead people. So let me ask you, Barbara, where did the hair come from? And was it from cut off of some corpse? And did you notice any maggots? The hair had no maggots. The hair came from a very good friend of mine who is a celebrity hairstylist actually got the wig from him. He made it for her. I did suggest the color. He made the wig. I got the wig from him. She, she paid me the money. I gave him uh, the money. I didn't make any profit off of it. I thought I was just doing something solely for a friend. Let me ask you this. Have you had a client before who has made this kind of a complaint? No, sir. No. You're and saying she no. Is okay. not, she, no, sir, she is not. No. Was the no. wig real or synthetic? Let me ask you, Barbara. To my understanding, it was supposed to have been real hair. It's what I was told, but do I know for sure that it was? No, sir, I do not. But does he cut hair off dead people? Yes. She got the hair from the guy overseas, and she knowingly knows that he works in a corpse. Thank God I didn't have the bugs, I, but I had the everything else. Yeah, but Even though she said that she wanted to do it and she wanted to help, if she was her professional after 20 years, then she would have not agreed to do it if this man told her he worked at a funeral home. His family owns a funeral home. He is not overseas. He owns a... Their family owns a funeral home. That does not mean that he is cutting hair off of the people that they bring in, When you sir. come to court, you have to produce evidence that the person involved, the person involved, not that there's some article that some people do it, that it's been done before. You have to show that in this specific case, there has to be evidence that she was involved in getting a wig cut off a, in this case, cut off a deceased person with I maggots in it. I paid her for a wig. Right. Well, yes, but there's no evidence. There's no evidence that she did anything wrong. I understand that the wig has spirits, and I understand all that. Just like the wig has spirits because it was cut off the dead people, God is going to see everything that has happened here. She knows what was wrong. She know exactly what she did. There is no evidence that she got this particular wig from a dead, a dead person. So I can't make a ruling whether these particular spirits were bad. I don't know that. I'm just saying I can't find any legal theory where Barbara here, who has been a professional for 20 years, that she has done anything that is outside the bounds of what a, a person would do. A friend comes to you and says, you know, you know people in the business and makes a recommendation, it was a bad experience. I get it. But she did do the work you asked her to do. She did refer you. She got you the wig you initially liked. She helped you put it on. She, in other words, she did what you asked. And I can't now turn to her and say, by the way, now you got to come up with $3,500. And so, uh, therefore, I have to dismiss the case. Thank you. I do believe um, that there are spirits. I know that there are good and, and not so good spirits. Do I believe that spirits transfer through hair? I don't know. I learned is never, ever, ever to wear weave again because it carries spirits. And hopefully, her spirit will be judged. Plaintiff Jake Rosenstein claims his best friend is playing dirty by holding his fantasy football winnings until he agrees to wear a tiny pink t-shirt. He's suing for $900.
Defended, Jonathan Zuckerberg claims the plaintiff isn't playing by the rules. Right he hand? says he owes him nothing. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Thank you. The Honorable Judge Jerry Springer now presiding. Hey. Good, Good morning, Judge. Hi, Naj. How you doing? I'm doing well, Judge. Thank Good. you. Good. This is case number 040 on the docket, Rosenstein versus Zuckerberg. Welcome to you guys. Thank you. Let's yeah. see what we have here. So we have the plaintiff, Jake Rosenstein, and you are suing Jonathan Zuckerberg for $900 for unpaid winnings. Yes. Winnings at what? Winnings at fantasy football. Oh. Oh, okay. He has been my friend since elementary school. Oh. I've known him. We've done school projects together in elementary school, middle school, high school. We went to camp together. We've worked together. We've been very, very good friends. Then and wh why are you suing him? He, I'm suing him because f with friendship comes a lot of uh, tidal waves, and fantasy football causes a lot of contention between friends. As it's fantasy football. Don't, it's more than fantasy football when you have a lot of entry fee. It's a lot of money involved. OK, OK, tell me, tell me about it. Him and I began the league. He is the commissioner of the league. He runs the league. OK, explain just for our viewers what exactly fantasy football is. In, in a very short description, sure. how would you explain it? So fantasy football is at the beginning of each real NFL season, the players of each league. In our league, we have 12 of our closest friends, me, him, and 10 other guys. We pick from the pool of the 32 teams of the NFL, and we make predictions on how they're going to do during the season. So, so in other words, you have a draft. Yes. Have you ever done fantasy football? I've never done, but I know it's very serious. Yeah, that, yeah. well, I did for one or two years, I did fantasy baseball. That's okay, similar concept. The Same concept, but I stopped because it consumes you. Yes. It becomes right. a full-time job. Yes. Because you've got to check every day, and it's like, right. Right. OK. Yes. But what I didn't like about it is, I'm a, in baseball, for example, I'm a diehard Yankee fan, and I Smart. couldn't. <laughs> uh, yes? No, he's, he's judgment for the defendant. No. <laughs> he's a Met fan. I will love him. Met fan. Oh, Mets you're a Mets fan? First. Mets till I die, baby. OK, well, uh, that well I can understand that, except I like professional baseball. <laughs> Let's pretend this is a courtroom. <laughs> it so, is. OK. What's your case here? Back to the beginnings of our league. We've been running it since 2011. So yes. it is a long, structured thing. 10 years we've been going on. Every single year, it's the same format. You pay the commissioner the entry fee, which has grown back in the day. What is the entry fee now? It has <laughs> gone to $100. Yes. $100. $100. That's a lot of tootsie rolls. Yes. I've and always said that. So. Winner <laughs> takes home the money. It's a lot of money to gamble on. I want my freaking money. So what happened? Two years ago, I had a bad year. I came in last place. Yeah. That, what happens if you're in last place? Well, that... You don't win any money. That is the biggest point of contention. What is it? The punishment. What's... You get punished other than losing your money? What else do you yes. have the punishment? The punishment is officially established this past fantasy year. Mm, that's not quite true. Officially established this past fantasy year, it is to wear a small pink t-shirt that with a unicorn that says, I suck at fantasy football on it, wear it, uh, wear it in public, and take a picture and post it on social media. You didn't wear that, apparently. No, never, we did not even own the t-shirt at the time. It was just an idea. Why? So wait, are you just making this up? Yeah. No. I, wait, let me talk to him. You can see I have multiple, actually five testimonials. Um, this is a... Okay. These are all league members. Uh, a is actually one Okay, these are texts where they say, I can confirm that we used the pink shirt in 2018 for the last place punishment. <laughs> right. Yeah, we used the shirt. Okay, so there are texts here which indicate, and you're not denying that these guys are members of the league. Those two individuals are, yeah. All right, so they're confirming. All right, I'll still let you make your argument, but they're confirming that in 2018, confirming the pink shirt was given to the person who came in last. OK, yes. there you okay. go. So Jake, he admits that he lost in 2018. Yeah. So I'm establishing that he broke the rules in the previous year. So he does not have a right. He, does ha he has no claim to the money for this year. It was not a punishment at the time. Well, why are these guys saying it was, and you're saying it's it not? It is very dependent on who those five guys are, because there are a, I have a very sizable population of the league that dislikes me and would like to see me embarrassed. So what I want to know, uh -huh. we have also. Why 
just, you're one of the guys. These are your friends. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just, just wear it? Because it didn't exist at the time. First of all, what does the $100, it, there's a $100 entry fee you said now? Right. So. Uh, what do you get for that? I don't keep any of it. It's 100% redistributed to the league, to the winners. And what so. are the rules about how it's distributed? So every, the, right. the 12 guys in the league. Yes. Each guy puts in $100. Correct. That's a $1,200 pool. Mm -hmm. What happens to that pool at the end of the season? $900 for the winner. For the winner. Uh, $200 for the loser. For the second, second place. place. Se second place. That, yeah, yeah. Winner, winner of the champs. It's $200 for the second place and $100 for first place in the regular season. I think he's just upset Why? because he lost to me in the championship and he's angry. Oh, so you're, you're here because you won that championship yes. in the playoff, the final two teams. I'm here because he's the holding Super the Super Bowl, crutch. you played him. Yes. And you beat him. Yes. And now, and you're not getting the 900. Yes. Do you feel a little bit conflicted? You're the commissioner. Exactly. And you're ruling that he doesn't get the 900 because he beat you. Why well, doesn't he get the 900? You happily accepted my money at the beginning of the year when you thought I didn't have Okay, so here is the issue. Even assuming that you're right that that was a rule. Can I establish? Uh, let me finish. I understand that's your position. Okay. Even if I accept everything, that that was the rule. You got to wear the pink shirt. If you come in last, last year or two years ago, whenever he came in last, he didn't wear the pink shirt. Therefore, he's not eligible to win the money. If that's the case, then how could you have taken the $100 entry fee from him? Exactly. Can I because bring up? Sir, stop speaking. Stop. Sorry. Right. You can't take his money knowing ahead of time that he can't win. Mm -hmm. That's stealing. Well, so you accept when you accepted the money, you waived that rule. Even granting that it's a rule, once you agreed to let him compete and you took his hundred dollars and put it in the pool, you cannot then come back and say that thanks for your money, now you can't win. You could have said to him, you can't compete this year because of the rule you violated, but you may not say to him, you can't compete this year, but we'll take your $100. Mm -hmm. And based on that, I find for the plaintiff $900. Even if he gets his money, I need him to wear the shirt in order to let him back in the league. I believe that fantasy, f fantasy football is sacred, and it is one of my dearest tenets. I love it. It is a big part of my life, and I will be damned before a corrupt commissioner comes between me and my championship money. Hey, YouTube, thanks for watching. For more Judge Jerry, click here. For more Jerry Springer, click here.